Thank you. So, I don't know if some of you guys are all younger than me and you guys are not from Europe, but uh, John Lennon. You guys know John Lennon well? Okay. So, he was um, obviously co founder of the Beatles, but he was actually an incredible man aside from his musical talents. He said, he once said, when I was five years old, my mother told me the key to, to, key to life is happiness. Then later, a few years later, he's in school and he was asked to write a, a paper on what he wants to be when he grew up. So he wrote down happy. And his teacher said, no, John, you didn't understand the assignment. And he said, actually, you don't understand life. And I absolutely <laughs> love that. <laughs> I love that so much. I've been obsessed with trying to find happiness you know, ever since probably, I don't know, college, 20 years. And I think it's such an important question. So I look at the things I'm proud of in my life, and normally they, they took years, right? Two, three, four years grinding, and you get to where you want to be. Bad news tends to happen very quickly. You're, you're minding your own business, you get a phone call, maybe one of your relatives is dying, you know, you go for a random doctor's check, and you find out you have something, um, some bad news, some something terrible. So just little thought experiment for you. Just imagine right now that you find out you have terminal leukemia and maybe you have six months, maybe you have nine months, it doesn't really matter. All the things that we were thinking about when we came here, all the little irritations, all the little things that we bothered us in the back of our mind, would that really matter if you had, if suddenly you thought you know, your lifespan is going to be 40 years, that suddenly goes to six, six months or three months, or whatever it is. I would imagine it's going to be no for most people, and I think, myself included. So what have you done? You've just reframed your problems with a, with a new perspective. And I think that um, we all have a death sentence, right? There's a reason the Greek gods were um, jealous of humans, because without an expiration, you don't have as much intensity and passion. If you live forever, things, things wouldn't matter as much. Huh? I'll do it next century, you know? So by, having, by, by putting yourself in that mindset, I'm terrified I'm 39 in a couple of weeks. I've had a fear for 15 years that I'm an old man, hopefully surrounded by grandkids at my feet, and my fear is that I'll sit there with regrets. That drives me. And every time, so I, I'm trying to reframe that, reframe all the problems. But for you guys, what is the secret to happiness? I've read many books on it, and you know, some say you, know, you want to get yourself in a flow state. Other people say you should be altruistic. Um, what I found, and I think um, it's a really great way of looking at things, and it really segues nicely into Maggie's speech, which she was just talking about, is uh, Benjamin Franklin said, you're only as happy as you want to be. So what does that mean? The traditional route to happiness is, you know what, I want to get this girl, or I want to get this new job, or I want to get this new car. You have all these goals, and you think that when you get them, you're going to be happy. But we have something called adaptability. And you know, paraplegics, six months after the accident, tend to revert back to a mean of their kind of baseline happiness. Same, you know, you have great news, you win the lottery. Six months later, you're back down to where you were. Um, so we have, we have to just decide, like, None of us here, the reason we're here is we want to improve ourselves. None of us are here because we're exactly where we want to be. But if we take a step back and we say, well, I'm on the path where I want to be, you're going to be much happier not being in the place you, you, you are right now. So I think that's it's such an important thing. Um, there's a very famous thing in the, in the combat sports, there's a very famous phrase. It's called ETG, embrace the grind. And the idea is if you have a five or six, six weeks, it's going to be six weeks of absolute misery, right? You're dieting, you're training hard, you're sore every day, you wake up feeling like you've been hit by a truck. And then you think, well, after six weeks, when I have this crushing victory, it'll all be worth it. But do you really want to live, you know, and I used to live like that. I was, I was competing when I was younger, and I would be like, oh, fighting in four weeks. I just wanted to click my fingers and just be done with that four weeks of anxiety. And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Click the comedy with Adam Sandler. It's a great movie. He, he basically, he, he has a remote where he can fast forward those bad periods of, of his life. And I remember thinking, God, that's, it, it, it spoke to me so much because there's so many times in my life where I just wanted to, okay, I just gotta get through this three week period and then I'll be happy. And it's such a bad approach because you'll miss, you know, all this other stuff while you're getting through this bad approach. That's just one segment of your life. Well, in the movie, his dog, he was clicking, clicking, clicking some bad periods with his work. And then the dog that he loved so much passed away. And I actually just lost my dog, who got me through all the highs and lows of my fighting career. And it, it, the movie just, it, it spoke to me so much. So, 
uh, personal story of when I when I applied this to myself. I was turning 35, and I was like, always want to do exciting things to look back at. So I said, you know what? There's one day I want to do this ultra marathon in South Africa. It's a 35 mile race called the Two Oceans Ultra Marathon. It's supposed to be the most beautiful race in the world. And I looked, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! It's on my 35th birthday that day. I'm like, it was a couple of months out. I'm like, that's it. I'm flying there. I'm going. Life gets in the way, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing, blah, 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 a couple of weeks out, I'm going to, going to South Africa. I get there and I barely train. I did one half marathon, I've done a few runs, I'm in horrible shape. I get up at two in the morning, I think I start at five, have some breakfast, I'm just, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. And I get there and the, the, the South Africans are singing the national anthem, it's, it's a real big famous race there. For them. A lot of guys there have done like 10 times, 15 times. And this couple, very nice couple, took me from the, from the hotel, so many of the star line, they were talking to me and they said, Lawrence, just enjoy it. Just be present and just, and just read it. So for the first half, mi half marathon, maybe 30 miles, I was just watching the sunrise. I was looking at the beautiful scene, it was flat. The next 50 miles, it was up and down hills. And yeah, it was hard, but I was just thinking, this is, this is incredible. I actually did it. I did something I said I'm going to do. I'll never forget this birthday. And then finally, I finished it and I couldn't walk for a few days. And then later on, I, I rented a car and I was just driving around and I drove you know, half the route. And it's gone up and down these hills. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I run in Chicago, it's flat. I don't know how I did it, it was crazy. <laughs> but it was a, a great reminder that when we're really present, and we're, you can, if you're running, you wanna focus on the pain in your legs, or do you wanna focus on the fact you're alive, like you're feeling it. It's, it's, it's all, everything's about reframing. So I think that that is the, the secret. You're only as happy as you wanna be, as you choose to be. So choose to be happy, you know, wherever you are, just choose to be happy. So thank you so much.